Hey everyone, Michael here. I hope you're doing well. In today's quick tip video, I'm going to show you how to customize your Lightroom workspace in just a few easy steps to best meet your needs as you process your images. Okay, as we jump here into Lightroom, we're going to start off in the library module. And as you can see, everything is probably going to look exactly or very similar to how your Lightroom is laid out. You've got your general navigation over on the left hand side here with navigator, catalog, folders, and so on. And then on the right in the library module, you have your histogram preview of your image, quick develop, keywording, and some other items in here to help you better organize your images, essentially. The main key here for me is I don't use all of this when I'm in the library module. So I really want to hone in on the areas that are of importance to me. And this may be different from what's important to you, but this is the beauty of it is you can customize it as you see fit. And again, to best meet your needs. So starting off, one of the first real big tips that I've picked up in Lightroom over the years is the difference between having to dig through every single menu as it's expanded out versus being able to just go in and jump from section to section without having to do a whole lot of scrolling. And the way to do that real easily is you click on any of the headers. So whether it says navigator, catalog, folders, quick develop, etc. If you right click on any of those section headers, you'll see an option here for solo mode. If you click on that, Initially, not a whole lot changes, and I did it on the left side of the screen here. So right now I've got catalog expanded and navigator, navigator expanded. If I come in and select collapse all, now I'm a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. And I don't really like having navigator expanded, so I'm just gonna go ahead and collapse that down. This is a section that's an exception to the rule. So when you turn on this solo mode, you notice that all of these categories or all these sections are automatically collapsed down. Now what this does is as you want to go into a different section, it'll open just that section when you click on it. And then if you jump to a different section, it closes the one you were in and opens the new one so that you don't end up with every single section open as it is by default and you're doing all this constant scrolling up and down. So as a quick example, if I click into catalog, you can see that now my catalog is expanded and nothing else is, is open. But if I wanted to jump into my collections where I've got a lot more information, you can see right away catalog closed down automatically. And now I just have my collections uh, panel open here. So again, it's a, just a, a way to help you keep from having to scroll up and down. And it's less valuable, frankly, in the library module. But especially as you get into the develop module, it really comes in handy uh, to, to streamline your, your process in terms of looking for a particular panel, uh, and so on and so forth. So we'll get into that in a minute. Over on the right side here, again, you've got your histogram, quick develop, and keywording. So I'm gonna go ahead and just enable solo mode again over here as well. And you can see it left quick develop open because that's a section I was already working in, but the other ones automatically collapse down. Now, if I were to jump down to say comments, just the comment section is open and quick develop closed down. But there's a thing here too that you can do that again, for me, I don't personally use quick develop within the library module. I don't use comments within the library module. So what you can actually do is again, right click and you've got all these little tick marks next to each of the sections. You can simply uncheck those. And so I just unchecked comments and now the comment section is hidden away so that I don't have to even worry about seeing it because I never use it. If I wanted to add back in the comment section in the future, because suddenly I do have a need for it, all you'd have to simply do is come up and right click on any of the headers and click on comments again. You can see right away, it's instantly added back in. But again, I don't use comments, so I'm gonna untick that. I also don't use my keyword list, and this is especially uh, pretty cumbersome when you're scrolling through if you've got it expanded. So I never use that. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna untick that. I do use metadata uh, for titles and descriptions, and my copywriting and things like that. I do use keywording, so I'm gonna leave that. And again, I already mentioned I don't use quick develop, so I'm gonna go in and right click and take away that quick develop section as well. So now we're basically at a point here where I've got my library module set to where everything's collapsed down unless I'm actively working in a section and I've 
hidden and removed from my visibility the sections I never use, just so that I've got a cleaner workspace to, to work around and navigate around in, and it makes things a little bit easier as I'm in here in the library module. Okay, now we're over in the develop module, and the same principles apply here as what we just walked through in the library section as well, but there are a few different things you can do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just like I did in the library section, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna right click on one of these headers and I'm gonna set myself into solo mode to collapse down all of the sections other than the one I'm actively working in. And then same concept as well is I can come in here and disable or hide the sections I don't use. So I don't use presets, so I'm gonna untick that. However, I do use these other pieces. So I'm gonna leave all of that alone. If I move into my history, my history is gonna expand out. If I move into my collections, my collections are gonna expand out. But again, only the section I'm working in is actively expanded. Coming over to the right-hand side with my actual development tools, again, same exact concept. So I'm gonna right-click. I'm gonna move this into solo mode. And now you can see that all I have to worry about is the section I'm actively working in. So whereas before, if I disable solo mode and I expand all these sections out, if I'm in here working and let's say I want to go make a color adjustment, I've got to scroll until I come across my HSL panel. Or if I want to go down to uh, detail and start doing some sharpening and noise reduction, it's right in the middle. So as you're working through this, you know, it's just, it's a lot of scrolling and it's very easy to scroll too far, not far enough and not find the section you're looking for right away. So again, if I right click, go into solo mode, now all I'm gonna see expanded is the section I'm actively using. So if I click down and collapse basic, now if I wanna jump to detail, boom, there's detail, really easy. I don't even have to scroll. Same thing if I wanna to go to effects, maybe I wanna add a vignette, click on effects, it's gonna expand out, it's right there. Now if I wanna go back up to my basic panel, again, almost no scrolling, I can click on that and now I'm in my basic panel. So again, a really easy way to jump around the develop section without having to do a whole bunch of scrolling and missing the sections you're actually looking for as you're trying to process your images. The other cool thing you can do here in the develop module is if I right click, I can come in and you have a customized develop panel option. So if I click into that, this is where you can, similarly to the other areas, you can turn sections on and off but the other cool thing is you can actually reorder sections. So what I've actually done in my develop module is I've reordered the different sections basically to match my workflow. So for me personally, for instance, detail, I always do at the very end. I don't do sharpening. I don't do noise reduction until I'm done with an image, essentially. And a lot of that is for performance reasons, but also there's just really not a huge need to do it until you're done. So I can click and drag this down to the bottom. So now my detail panel is going to be at the very bottom. So one of the things I do first is lens correction. So I'm gonna click and drag that to the very top. Now that is gonna be right at the top so that as I start working through an image from the get-go, it's the first section that's waiting for me. Generally, I go from lens corrections into my basic adjustments, into my tone curve. Uh, everything else here is pretty good. I might actually move my transform section up above basic. If I have any transformation of the image I wanna do, I really wanna do that before I start getting in and doing a whole lot of editing on it. So let's move that up there. And let's see, I also do calibration right off the get-go, even before I do basic. So I'm gonna move that up here as well. So now I've got it in the order of my workflow. I start with lens corrections. I do any transformation I might need. I put in a little bit of calibration tweaks. Then I move into the meat and potatoes of the processing phase which for me is getting to the basic panel, tone curve, color tweaking and things like that. And then finally effects, which would be your vignetting generally. And then last step would be detail for sharpening and noise reduction. So I'm gonna save this. Now you're gonna get a pop-up saying you need to relaunch Lightroom to see the develop panels in the new order, that's fine. So I'll go ahead and do that and we'll just come back here in just a second so you can see my new layout. Okay, so we're back into Lightroom. I'm still on the develop section. And if we look over on the right now, those panels have all been reordered into what I just did in the uh, little prior segment there. So again, lens correction, transform, calibration, so on and so forth. Everything's in the order in which I personally work. If you work in a different order, by all means, you can move those things around just as I showed you. 
And again, tailor the workspace to meet your needs as you do your post-processing. And this isn't just for landscape photography, this is for portrait or anything that you might be coming in here to do some editing on. Everybody's got a little bit of a different preference for their personal workflow. So again, Lightroom really lets you tailor things to best meet your personal preferences. So another thing you can do before we wrap up here is you can also minimize or hide your left and right panels and the top and bottom panels within Lightroom. And you can do this individually within library and develop. So if you set it one way in library, you can have it set differently within the develop section. But all you do is you come over to these little arrows on the very far left and right edges of the screen or up towards the top of the Lightroom screen and down at the bottom. And what that allows you to do is hide that away so that you're not seeing that kind of side distraction as you're working within the program. So for me personally, when I'm in develop mode, uh, I prefer to have a little bit less distraction. So um, I kind of vary over time, but typically I always keep the left panel hidden. And once you hide it, you can still get back to it. All you have to do is come over and hover on the little arrow and it pop out for you. And if you want to just bring it back permanently, you would click on that arrow again. But for me, again, my personal preference is a little bit less clutter as I'm working on an image. So I'm going to hide that left panel. Uh, you can also hide the top panel and get a little bit bigger image. And again, removing some of that distraction in your workspace. And same thing with the bottom panel, hide that down. And even if you want to, you can hide the right panel. Now me personally, I keep the right panel visible at all times because that's obviously where I'm working. But again, just another easy way to tailor your workspace to, to how you really, really want it and to help you focus and work through your workflow as efficiently as possible. I hope you all found this helpful. If you did, please consider giving this a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow along as I release more of these videos in the future, consider subscribing to my channel as well. Take care, everybody.